Scratch up the numbers with a knife. Erase the marks with an eraser. After reworking the date, then paste in the name cut out of the newspaper. That's it. He made the first blank check of his life. At the age of 17, he went to the bank to exchange the cash. But his ordinary clothes, he was not able to win the trust of the bank staff. Instead, he was exposed and he didn't get a penny. On the way there, he, he remembered what his father had said to him. The first thing people see is not your appearance. It's your clothes. It's your clothes. That's right. He knew his father's words made sense. Because on the first day of school, he stepped into the classroom in a decent suit and was mistaken for a teacher. Mistaken for a teacher. And so he did what he had to do. He taught French to everyone and kicked the real teacher out of the classroom. It took a week for the headmaster to find out. After his parents divorced, he chose to run away from home. The checks he had brought from home soon ran out of money. He picked up the few blank checks he had left. Frustrated, he wandered the streets. Looking up, children were crowding around the captain asking for autographs. A group of stewardesses surrounds him. In this day and age, pilots were as popular as the stars. He had an idea. Putting on his school uniform, he disguised himself as a student journalist and went to the airline. He found out about pilots. Then he got a custom-made uniform and badge. With this outfit, Frank became the most sought-after pilot in the world. He began to forge airline checks like crazy. He took the logo from a model airplane and stuck it on the check. A fake airline check is created. He walks into the bank with a six-person stride. This time he has succeeded. Confidently, he pulls out a pile of fake airline checks. He easily cashes out a large amount of cash. He followed this up by buying hundreds of model aircraft, replicating the road to success. And with the help of a fake badge and free flights, he was able to reap the money and capture the flight attendants at the same time. But he wasn't satisfied. He meets a bank teller by pretending not to be aware of it. He learns the secret of the check recognition machine. Immediately afterwards, he goes to an auction and acquires a cheap recognition machine. He started to forge a large number of checks and made a fortune. But this also attracted the attention of the FBI. A patient came into the hospital covered in blood. Frank threw up when he saw it. It seems that doctors are not so easy to pretend. He decides to change his profession again. Next, he goes to visit the parents of the young nurse, in front of his father-in-law to be, bragging about having passed the judicial exams. He had passed the bar. He was not expecting his father-in-law, who was a senior prosecutor. He is a veteran prosecutor and recognizes his lies immediately. In order not to break up with the girl he loves, he has no choice but to confess. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a lawyer. I'm nothing really. I'm just a kid. With your daughter. This immediately impressed the father-in-law to be. He provided Frank with some exam books. He memorized everything in just two weeks. He successfully passed the judicial examination. He became an assistant to the prosecutor. Everything seemed to be going so well. Frank feels at home after a long time. But by now, he has swindled over $4 million. How could the FBI let him off the hook? On his wedding day, Frank saw the police all around him. He knew his wife had betrayed him. He had a plan. He hastily put on his captain's uniform. He went to the flight attendant school. Under the pretext of choosing a stewardess, he chose some pretty girls to change into stewardesses' uniforms and walk into the airport with him arm in arm. And sure enough, the policemen were colored, too. Their eyes were drawn to the beautiful girls. Frank arranged for a taxi driver to change into a uniform and stay near the airport. He was disguised as him and stayed near the airport. Carl was thus teased again. Frank escaped. He went on a check-fixing spree around the world. But Carl didn't give up. Through his investigations, he learned that the machines used to make the checks came from a small town in France. On seeing Carl, Frank is still exuberant because he didn't believe he could catch himself. Carl told him that a net had been laid outside the door. He had to put his hands in the handcuffs and accept the reality. For years later, he was extradited back to the United States by Carl. It was then that he learned that his father had died unexpectedly. He was devastated. He secretly removed the sink. He slipped out of the toilet. Frank misses his mother. He finds the place where she lives now. He saw a cute little girl through the glass. It was a cozy home, looking at his half-sister. And to think that his mother had never looked for him in all those years. He was desperate, no longer wanting to run away. He was brought back to the country by Carl. He was sentenced to 12 years in prison for making counterfeit checks. Then, by chance, he helped the police identify the counterfeit checks. Carl released him on bail too. He helped the police to solve the case. He became an expert on financial fraud, but he found it boring. He was ready to run away again. This time, Carl did not use the police force. He was given a leave of absence to think things over before making a decision. The clock ticked down on Monday. Two hours had passed since the start of the day. There he was. He took the fake check right across from Carl. Both of them smiled. That year, he was 22 years old. Life was just beginning. Everything could be done again. A large number of counterfeit checks, similar modus operandi, the exact same place of operation, targeted. Carl breaks into the house. Frank, who should have been panicking, should have been panicked, but calmly emerged from the toilet. He comes to say he works for the intelligence bureau. The criminal who made the counterfeit notes has escaped. Carl asked him for his papers. Frank handed over his wallet without hesitation. He opened the curtain and said, my partner is already in the car with the suspect. In fact, it was a neighbor who happened to be waiting by the side of the road for his son to get into the car. And no wonder, it really does look like a prisoner escort. While this was going on, Frank was talking about where he was, going to take the evidence to his colleague. He rushed downstairs with his things. Carl looked down and saw. The wallet was full of useless cards. Frank had disappeared into the crowd. The media were all over the story. They called him the James Bond of the air. But Bond is surrounded by beautiful women, and he's all alone. So he made himself into a real Bond. Suit. Sports car. A beautiful woman. With his current status. Looks and wealth. Beautiful women. Are nothing. But he still felt empty and bored. He made a phone call to Carl. I wanted to apologize.
He sent him his real address, but Carl didn't believe him and hit Frank right in the gut. You didn't call just to be he panicked, he didn't want anyone to see his vulnerable side. He hung up the phone in a hurry, leaving the hotel. Carl learns that Frank's former name was The Flashes. He realizes that the man he has been playing against for so long, it's just a little boy. A little boy who has never been seen before, even with the missing child as a lead. He soon found Frank's old home, hearing that her son owed a huge amount of money for a check. The mother rushed to pay off her son's debt with her savings. So Frank's about $1.3 million. When she heard this figure, the mother was shocked. The mother was stunned. And Carl walks away. On the other hand, Frank goes to see a friend in hospital. He happens to meet a lovely little nurse. And in a moment when he looked at her, he says to himself, I'm going to take her down. He forges a doctorate from Harvard Medical School, read a few days of medical books on the fly. He was lucky enough to pass an interview with the head of the emergency room. From captain to doctor, he also falls in love with a young nurse.